This last pick, Medusa, seems to be exactly what TNC is going to abuse Gambit's lineup with. Something weird, but in one more minute time, we are going to have the night time, and maybe that's when Gabby can make a play happen. There it is. It's actually KP. Oh, dream, 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 all right. That is very surprising. Meanwhile, over the mid lane, Vampire is going to be trying to go for the toss back onto Armel. Leads off of the Avalanche, close enough to get the toss back into the tower range. GPK doing a good job pulling him as far back as possible. He's going to run out of the mana shield here. Is Armel tanking enough on just that alone? He has a little bit of fairy fire he can use as he gets into the trees and tosses the tree, and that is oh, going to be good enough. Oh, didn't get his fairy fire off. And no levels of crippling fear, just all in on the Hunter and Knight, all in on the concept of just running at these heroes. FNG, Axes come back, does hit him, and KP will manage to get that kill. But this mid kill, they know what the real threat to this game is. It's Armel. You can have a good Beastmaster game, but if you can kill this guy over and over Arch, again. Arch, he's trying to get there. Will be able to get his ultimate off as well as the Talker Magic to turn around now as Gabby comes in. They do manage to finish off that Medusa, but it looks like it could be too dead from Gambit as Vampire. It's going to be chased down by Gabby eventually here. May not have the mana for a void, but the Chakra Magic will be given to him farm faster too as he's a result. pretty much got it. What I would like for Gambit to do is make their way towards mid. They're going to be able to go for the Chronosphere onto Tim's, who is trying to sit away in the trees, but Dream just quickly pulls the trigger on that Chronosphere as he nice. dives in with the rest of Gambit. Now they're going to try and take over this mid tower. And the reason for this is so you can open up the jungle and you don't just allow all the cores of TNT to get huge. You have to take away this tower. <laughs> Vampire trying to come in oh, and steal some it. of that CS, and he does get that big creep, but now he's going to be caught by the hero rotations of TNC. As Gabby's going to join him. Gabby who did hit. not have Dark Ascension earlier. A big peak. They can probably run around as four. Feeling relatively confident about taking kills. You're going to see Gabby go for this one on FNG. Whereas the other heroes I feel like were exploitable. Dream going to be able to get a Chronosphere out with the Freezing Field. They're laying everything they have to be able to kill KP. He's still got out the Primal Roar, but yeah, TNC, they don't want to take the fight deep on top of a Shrine. Chronosphere is down, though. So TNC may still be able to force an engagement. They managed to push him back into the silence. A beautiful Blinding Light Blast from March, but it's not going to result in the kill. The Queen of Pain is too tanky with the Strength Treads. They know there's no Chronosphere, so Armel still very far forward. The Dark uh -oh, Ascension has been popped. Hey, we void. They're going to be able to get the toss of the Medusa into the rest of the enemy team, but do they actually want that? Because now she just pops her Stone Gaze. The rest of Gambit have to get out. A beautiful Dark Rift, though. That actually forces so much out from TNC, and all they're going to get out of it is actually a Tier 1 tower. Well, they should have it in time. They've got a DD rune on their Night Stalker. This could also signal something. Pipes rolling out, as is the mech. So those are actually really big team fight items. I think okay. you're right. Yeah. But first, there's going to be pick off on Gabby potentially here with the Chronosphere. And once again, the freeze well, get laid out. Let him A beautiful one. Now he's going to get off his BKB. Turned around with the silence. Oh, the and Willow, it's double damage. So and now with the control up on this faceless Void, he's so done for. They're going to be able to get the Void to slow down another two heroes. Get those out. Especially since it was so easily diffused with the Keeper of the Light. Yeah. Just a single Will-O-Wisp who stops all that damage. And, well, they will manage to get the toss back here onto Tim's, but sadly, no follow through. And Gambit, desperate to get some, some pushes in the side lane. GPK is hoping by hitting this tier two, someone will come back, but no, TNC go for the high ground. They're immediately going to jump in with a nice will of wisdom. The follow-up of a blink dagger from Gabby managed to get the, the silence. Underlord. No spells are going to return, and Shashlo is going to be going down here from the boar, and Vampire may just be chased all the way to the ends of the fountain, especially with the Chakra Magic, giving her a fresh round of void. Gabby and the rest of TNC march into the Gambit base. They're picking tier fours. Yeah. That's how confident they feel. GPK, they're saying, like, you cannot keep on going for this bottom lane. You're going to have to come back and defend Fend. They do have the Chronosphere up, but one tier four is already down. Gambit, they got to start setting up in a hurry, and if they're not careful, they're going to start dying back on some of these heroes as Gabby tries to threaten FNG a little bit. Both tier fours down. TNC got to be careful about chasing this because TNC will fight. They won't abandon their Medusa here. The back line still strong, letting Armel sit in front. Gambit. What's your way to start this fight? What is the strategy? It's got to be some sort of toss back. 
I'm not sure if you want to go for the Medusa. He does manage to get the real one. He tried to go for the Manta Dodge, but no such luck. They're going to be able to get the Chronosphere onto Armel. But Light again! Will with as well as the Blinding Light, just making things terrible for Gambit. They're going to have to retreat back to their fountain, but they've already lost their two supports. And Underlord stuck here with no damage. He try and fight up against Gabby. No such They're luck there. They're just going to call it. They know it just doesn't matter if their cores live through this fight. They don't have the damage to deal with TNC. And TNC is up here just embarrassing good teams. I'm not really sure how I feel about it, like Techies versus an Alk. I feel like the pace of the game might be a little bit too fast for the Techies. Mm -hmm. uh, but this Lena-Ogre combo, like you said, it's pretty deadly. Yeah, I can. I mean, KP feels real good about taking these fights, and this should be a kill on FNG. First Blood goes the way of KP. Gabby forced to teleport back. March will bring him back in with the Chen. Next to Divine I think Armel's dead. Yeah, it looks like a double damage. That's going to be good enough. GPK, you said you're going to ask the impossible of him. Hoping that they'll stick around for a little bit too long. Going to lay down a mine. The stun's this is his opportunity out. right here because Dream does need some help. Vampire's going to keep on running behind and lay a mine out first. They he might wants FNG to though. get here. They, they, he really wants the slow. He wants the extra stuns. And now he's going to show up. Two-man hit with a blast off. And KP, he's going to try and kill the support. But it looks like Tim's going to be run down by Dream. Very easily getting that kill. And Vampire will be able to get out. If anything, KP may still die. If the blood right lands, KP jukes it to the left, but that means he's pretty far away from any safety. Slow down, Dream sped up from the thirst. Might be able to still run him down, except that Lena's gonna TP in, so maybe not a good LSA, but a new comes out from FNG. That actually completes the kill. I do like the fact that uh, Gambit are trying to uh, aren't trying to like disguise their pushes too much. They're just going for like, okay, TNC isn't gonna fight our gyrocopter. Let's just go for it. Bottom lane though, they are gonna be able to get the rupture on Gabby. Chen brought him into this push, but now Shashlo is gonna try and make a kill happen here. It's gonna lead off onto KP. KP getting into the trees until he's pulled back by FNG. And Gabby, who still has the rupture on him, is kind of stuck. Vampire's gonna go for the deny of the blast off. Does manage to get it. Doesn't hit the damage onto Gabby, but it I'm looks like Dream may be him. able to get him. The body blocks were almost there from that. Frost Ogre, but it looks like it was actually good enough. He doesn't want to chase Gabby underneath the tier one tower. Instead, they're going to have to content themselves with a kill on March. Being very aggressive. He doesn't want to get into a- uh Oh, they beat him in to try and go for the tower and he got the multicast. That'll allow Gabby. Oh, he doesn't actually hit the splitter. That's going to be a bit of trouble. Now he should be able to run him down still with all that magic damage. Unless the missile creates enough space. KP tries to rear up the fire flies and he gets another multicast. Of course you do, KP. FNG right enough. runs out of damage. 25 HP left on that ogre. He has vision of him too, thanks to the thirst of the Bloodseeker. And that is Dream, who's going to come up to this top lane. He's coming up here fast. Oh, he knows he's denying the tower right now. He can't actually get to it in time. Maybe he's trying to do what he can. The Blood Rite comes in. He's going to be able to dodge that, a rupture out, and eventually. Just runs in circles. Even further than that, it's just a little bit more difficult. They spot the Lena. FNG be will be able to grab him here. A blast off. Not quite enough mana. He does have it now. It's only level one anyway, so they really want need him to GBK run into to be able to get this damage. And he does run into some mines now. They're going to throw out the Chain Frost. The Blast Off doesn't actually land. The Chen Heal comes down as well. Now Vampire's quite low. Yeah, he's got to be careful, especially he's going to bop the Soul Ring. Of course he does. Lays down a mine, but that's just going to lead to his doom. 10 to 6. Vampire. Just trying to play on this high ground, but the core ogre can just wander up. There is going to be Armel TPing in. He stuns himself with the unstable concoction, but they still manage to get the Yules. Shoshlo doesn't need, uh, doesn't have actually Burrow Strike up, so he can't actually get away from any of this right now. And he's going to be chased down by TNC pretty easily. All right. Well, then you've just lost. You're slowly yeah, going to lose. They didn't bother throwing sentries into the pit before Armel walked in. Armel is he so was... unconcerned about dying in this game. Yeah. In this room, they're going to lead off with the rupture on to KP. Armel's going to pop his ulti now, though, and the stun. Oh, stuns, Armel, right? keep on getting bashed. No, he gets off the unstable concoction. Get outside the pit for a moment, dance around. He doesn't roach like incredibly quickly or anything. It's just uh, Gambit is struggling to find any sort of way to initiate on a mission. Shashlo does have that blink dagger. I think he might actually Bloodright's go for Bloodrite's going to reveal. Here. They're going to go for the up center. Oh, just going to do the burrow strike, and he grabs it. He grabs it in time. Shashlo, and he gets the, big the last save, hit. Gets the Aegis and the last hit onto the Roshan. Don't think he's getting out of here alive, but you did your best, buddy. It was very well done. Yeah. He wasted a good two minutes of their time. Yep. Got the last hit. And uh, Gambit, we're not positioned. Well, not. Now Tim's has just died because Tim's. of that. I guess technically they have Sinister Gaze, but that doesn't last too long. Aeon Disc for Tim's, another hero they're not going to feel comfortable initiating on. So who do they go for? Do they go for the Aeon Disc support? 
the Chen that doesn't matter. Or the right, three very Armel taking core as well. In. They're just going to run at the Gambit crew. And a lot of mines. They're going to have a lot of mines out, and that's going to do a lot of damage to KP. They're going to try and turn GPK, laying out some flat cannon shots. Armel is certainly not the hero they're going to be able to bring down, but maybe some of the back line with the epicenter going out. Gabby with his BKB, he may not last for long. In fact, he will go down away from his allies as he tries to sandwich Gambit, but Gambit pushed right back into him. Yeah, and we talked about it. He can't get that much bigger, so he's going to lay down the... Gabby knows. Split Earth to be able to cut down the trees to run into Vampire. Vampire, well, he'll try and maybe run to his remote mines or just go for a blast off suicide. Uh, doesn't even do that. Helps out Gambit a little bit as I walk in, see another mine. Armel's going to start hitting this. All right, can't trust will do it again. Can this Sand King steal another Aegis? And this He's, time, she. I bet he walks to the exact same space. Yep. And then he waits for the Blood Right to come in for the vision. Yep. And they're going to do it again. Lead off on up. Rupture on a KP instead. Follow up Burrow Strike. Immediately, Yule Sceptered up, though. And now the Sand King's going to be in trouble. He does manage to get a four staff off. The Hood of Defiance can still protect him a little bit. The Chain Frost bouncing back and forth. But at the same time, Armel does stun himself. He's in the damage. He's completely out of this fight. That means GPK can focus on some of the back line. He tries to run him over. Shotzo is still trying to get away, though. And FNG, he's going to be quickly eaten up by Armel, who's now going to be able to get the stun onto the Gyrocopter as well. They don't have any of these uh, disengaged tools, the Lich and the Sand King being dead. Nobody can stun Armel. Hiding in the wings. He's got some mines in there. I think he wants to try to get the last hit. Maybe if he could get the blast off perfectly timed. Well, Lena just ran into the pit with the gems, so I don't... Maybe it's just underneath Roshan, so they still don't see it. Empire's starting to tick out pretty low. All right, well, Vampire's now been seen, so he's going to be hit by a multicast and will probably die here. Tries blast to go for the blast off. Oh. It doesn't do a whole lot. So Gabby will get here in time to grab that extra life. They're going to go for the high ground again. This should be the death push. TNC. Storm. Going to fortify their wave. There is a minefield sign, but they're just going to go to the left of it slightly. Even opening up some of the trees that they can play around. Okay. Rupture on a KP once again. Not sure if they care about it. They're going to clear out the tree waves so that there's no Sand King epicenter, but he's actually all the way to the right. But it doesn't matter if you just lose your base like Earth this. Chain in. Frost is gonna be a lot of damage. Maybe they can actually overwhelm Armel. Dream's trying to run him down still, but the regen over time is allowing Armel to be able to survive as TNC back him up with that BKB usage. See if they can get some sort of sinister gaze or four staff plays game. that could possibly get them into the mines. That's what they really need here is Lotus Orb protecting Gabby. Oh, there's the Sinner's Gaze trying to pull him back in as best as possible with the first strike out. Not quite over the remote mines, though, and Armel will be able to run to the left and Gabby be fine, but Gabby runs, in. runs forward with his BKB. Doesn't actually finish off any of these heroes. Really oh, he's going to run through the minefield line, though, but he does have that Aegis. So they just blew all the remote mines, and now TNC can back in. GPK, Epicenter going out and going. Does manage to hit the Lina with his Burrow Strike, but doesn't really get the most amount of damage. His allies couldn't follow that up. They weren't ready to go. They were still low and regening up. Vampire tries to position himself again to be able to get some remote mines out. They take away the Aeon Disc of the Lena, but now Dream has been Abyssal Blade up. Fortunately, Armel got stalled by the Laguna Blade out. Another round of remote mines is going to do some damage, but still not enough. They do have the BKB from Armel back up for him to be able to challenge the Gyrocopter, but he's got it Satanic. He activates it. He's going to be able to get a lot of life steal out of that one, and the Chain Frost about to go to finish off. Please hit Gabby. He does manage to bounce back to him, but the rest of TNC will be able to split themselves up while Armel single-handedly deals with GPK. The rest of TNC looking to be able to retreat, but they can't leave the Alchemist by himself. Uh-oh, Dream, does he just overextend himself? Does manage to get a bash in? Armel finished him off, double kill for him. How aggressive they are. Right, field sign. Win. Actually a little bit off the mark there. This isn't actually protecting the mines. They throw out the, oh, he did the four staff, but that is Aeon Disc. That means Tim's just easily resets, and now there is nothing to stop TNC. And look at Armel go. Once that multicast fades. after multicast onto the techies. <laughs> missile after missile. They're gonna try and chase in onto KP. Blow him up real quickly. He does have the cheese, but if they chase on no, he got off the cheese just in time before the missile landed. Right, Hexen, one second. Now they're gonna turn around. Dream. He's gonna get bursted out by the Laguna Blade, but GPK doing so much damage. The flat cannon shots will manage to finish off the mass buying back though. And the missile, it's gonna be able to chase down Armel. Can he actually get this kill by himself? GPK with this divine rapier came in big time, but Armel with a BKB. He's gonna he try to hide into the trees. He's gonna drink off the unstable concoction. Now he comes back in. 
Does he have any more disables? He just doesn't have the mana. But oh, Armel, he's going to man fight him. But GBK, he does have a Satanic. This is not a good play for him. Armel just needs to keep kiting him around. But where is the rest of Gambit? Where's the rest of TNC? Gabby using his boots to travel. This is going to be the advantage that TNC had, not just with the barracks being down, but also Gabby and all his mobility with the boots of travel, being able to push into the side lanes, force somebody from Gambit back, and then trying to salt the Roshan. But a Texas long range side the Vice does manage to get the multicast, though, so GPK is an uninhibited right now. Will <laughs> deny his own ward, preventing the gold going to TNC. Shoshlo is just waiting on the high ground, seeing what sort of initiation opens up for him as Vampire walks into the Roshan pit, gets caught by the stun, or stepped out. Staff from the rupture Shoshlo. is on Gabby. They do manage to get some vision to sight the vice, though. They're going to try and chain stun up this gyrocopter, but the Lotus Orb is laid out on him. So, and the unstable concoction actually stunning out Armel. Not KP's great gone. for them. They've already lost KP. Now they managed to get the bash. Oh, on top no. of Armel! Trouble half health. Blast off going to come in, but he does manage to get his BKB off as well as the mech. That's going to be okay. He also has the hand of gone from Chen, so they shouldn't overcommit too much, thinking they're going to get a kill before that burst comes in. The unstable concoction landing on a GPK. They need to be able to finish off. Oh, the Laguna Blade's not quite enough to get shots off, but maybe Gyrocopter. He does have his He's so low. He has a Divine Rapier. They chase on him down and he falls. Divine Rapier on the deck. And it's going to go the way of Armel. Armel's going to take it and he's going to go for the Roshan. They no. do have buyback on their Gyrocopter. But it looks like they're just going to try to hold the high ground. And now look at how much damage he does. Vampire, he's in the area. And he's waiting for an opportunity. Tim's knows about this. He's feeling him out. DNC saying, bull me once. Take that Aegis away. Take that kill. We'll never let you get around. Oh, the and Tim's actually found him with a stun on yeah, the high Vampire ground. Vampire was caught by the long range LSA from Tim's. I mean, 50 seconds is a long time against this yeah. lineup especially with the Diabolic Edict level 25 talent for the last track. Not the only two buybacks that really matter, the Alchemist and the Gyrocopter are up. But so much of that Gyro's damage was tied up in that Rapier. It was the only reason any of those fights looked remotely close. How many remote mines are there here underneath this sign? Well, it may not matter. Double four staff. They're trying to get Armel into a position underneath those mines. Uh, KP will gladly take it if possible because he does have that Aegis. The Abyssal Blade goes onto Armel, allowing Dream to be able to retreat. 15 seconds till the Gyrocopter's back up. They just have to let Megas happen at this point. A refresher actually being used by Gabby to be able to catch Vampire with the Yule Scepter. So he has a die back. Now it's going to be a four versus five for the fate of the throne of Gambit. And this is going to go down really fast. Questioning his decision back up. now to wait for this, but this is an all-in. Nine Rapier is on its way. Activates activist. the flat cannon shot with the Burrow Strike. Starting things off. They do have that extra bit of damage coming out from GBK. They're going to be able to take down the Shark Copter. Not so low. Down. The second Divine Rapier on the deck. Gabby controlled up. Bash, bash, bash from Dream. He's going to be going down as well. Two cores dead from TNC and Gambit are going to take a third. They're going to get more. KP. They need a march down mid right now. Two Divine Rapiers. What a hold from Gambit saying, no, we don't buy back here. We wait out the Gyrocopter. We give them Megas. All your creeps are dying really fast. So Gambit are in a pretty good position here. They're going to try to bait GPK out, force a bad fight from TNC, and look at how quickly that tower goes down. Jesus. They're going to have to do X. something about this inside the vice. Do they have the four staff to protect them? Of course they do. They're going to reset things. Reset it again. Slowing him down. FNG just making sure he does manage to have the pro strike going up. Oh, he's gone. Armel. He just wiped that gyrocopter who does have a buyback. Dream's going to try and go and kill somebody here, but he just can't man fight anybody. Gabby is actually out life stealing any of Dream's damage. Divine Rapiers. Tim's is going to take one of them. And the buybacks, well, four staff away. Right around the hour marker, too. Gambit. Can they survive this assault? The Burrow Strike not going to be able to get it off in time, and that is the gem. Pick the techies for him. Now, he's, he's going to have to somehow win for GPK. Oh, they missed Misses. the Splitter Stun. Now the defensive force staffs come in from Gambit immediately. Scythe of Ice being used on a dream. They're thinking about pushing forward. Armel just a little bit scared of all these proximity mines. 
Stun out. Two-man stun coming out from uh, Shotzo. He's going to be able to lock down the two cores. Armel getting stunned up, but a heal coming down. And now he's going to start marching forward. Going straight for GPK. He's already dead. Now the stun's up, being bashing down this Bloodseeker, who just cannot do enough damage against this tanky Alchemist FNG, as well as Shotzo buying back a three-man pro strike this time around. But again, they're just out of damage. TNC will be stalled up by a glyph activated, but Gambit, no. This is the end. They're going to call it here. 61 minute TNC locked down game number two. Such a valiant effort from Gambit, pushing TNC to the absolute brink. 